<laughs> so we're gonna work from the clothes guard a little bit here and it's really important I mean we've gone over this position at length understanding like what is the control here you use your legs you have complete control of your legs around your opponent's hips but even in here like one of our primary objectives is this guard is more um, offensive and more effective if I can break my opponent's posture down then the legs climb up that's what opens up all the different submissions when they have strong posture this is kind of like a mid-range and it's still an effective range to work from. The challenge here though is because my partner has good posture, he can start to initiate different ways of opening the legs. And sometimes we kind of just resort to, let's just get this going and we'll unlock the feet for them, make it a little easier and then we kind of segue into open guard. Nothing wrong with that, but it's always important you guys understand that you have options in here. You don't have to um, just relinquish or, or, or concede. It's not that hard to get a collar sleeve grip on one side. The problem is if his head and shoulders are up, this is like it's still trying to break him down as a battle. And usually what happens here is they start using the free arm to put pressure on that outside leg, my right leg. And because my knee is so far away, the more pressure he puts, it's naturally gonna pop the leg open. And now, I, now my guard is open, I have to move from here. Holding on and trying to gut through it can be problematic because you're putting stress on, the, on your leg. Whenever you're holding like this, always remember that principle. The further your knee and elbow are apart, the weaker you are. And you notice how I'm all the way over towards Professor Mark's right shoulder. And he's going after my right leg. That gap makes me structurally weak. What we're gonna do here, and he's just gonna freeze right there. If I stay here, it's only a matter of time before that opens. We switch grips to this side. Now all I'm doing is, I'm not sitting up, I'm gonna move um, laterally and bring my elbow and knee together, which you see how it starts to break him down, makes this strong, but it also gives me the opportunity to draw this grip up, right here. Now I'm starting to break down his posture. We can go on different attacks now with his head down, but one nice thing from this position is I don't want to go square to him. I keep my head and shoulders this way. Now my hand goes palm up. Then I square back up and we have the choke. It's one way you break your partner down and you learn how to defend the attempt at the guard break because he's going after the weak side. Weak side meaning my elbows and knees are not close. It's harder for him to do this here. See, when I go out here, that leg is all by itself. It has no support. So when you're working from this position, your partner is gonna to start to use the, the elbow, the hand, whatever it is on that knee. You're just gonna take the collar grip, switch to the opposite collar. Some of you, depending on the size of your opponent, might need both. But again, remember, we're not pulling up. If you pull up, it's easy. It's gonna pop the leg off. When I get here, it's Head and shoulders are off the ground, but you see how I move sideways. And the more sideways you get, the more you can bring your elbow and knee together. <clears throat> then we choke the first grip in, elbow close to the chest, keep your head to the outside, and then we go palm up all the way through. Then we recenter, turn the, turn the palms in, and flare the thumbs out. Okay, so right from here. We're going here, back. In deep, we go right here, then we come back. Knees up high, turn the thumbs in, elbows in, and then flare the thumbs out. Okay, so are there any questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Are there any advantages to actually starting off with the grip on the right side? The, well, that's a great question. The way I always look at it, one of the things you always wanna do, and it's, it's funny because we kinda all do this. Every time we go for the collar grip, we do this but now look how far that shoulder is one way you can make your your collar chokes more effective is when I put my hand in the collar my head goes to this side you see I already have his posture broken I can come back this way and go here or I'm already over but putting your head on the opposite side helps break his posture down and it gives you the target either way doing this sure 
We have chokes that we can work on from here, just from the standpoint if I want to break down his posture. There's nothing wrong with that. But more often than not, our, most people, they start with a collar sleeve guard and they're trying to climb the legs up and break their opponent down only for them to explode out and then that. And that's when you need to, to make the switch. But to answer your question, sure, you can use the opposite side. There's no wrong <coughs> option here. Okay, any questions? Okay, we're gonna start with that and then we're gonna do a sweep from there, okay? Let's go, one, two, three. Okay, same, same scenario. I have the collar, sleeve, but posture. So this is another, another situation where if he has strong posture and, I'm, and I kind of start moving first, I, look, you can already see, he's already got that hand ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is I wanna make sure that this shoulder stays right in line with my hip. I don't give him this, I give him everything else. So I hold the collar, the sleeve, now we're gonna unlock the feet but I keep the knees biting against his hip. Because his hips are so close to mine, he can push on my knee all he wants. He, cannot, he can't step over, he can't pass the guard. He has to start backing up. But you notice when he backs up, I keep this shoulder here. Even here, go ahead and step over. He can't, that's when he turns. Now I shift my hip. We have the scissor sweep. Now I hold his hip with my foot to make sure his hip does not get away. This also protects you against the foot lock. Elbow down, we come up, make the first grip, but keep your head to the outside. If you make your first grip and your head's over, you're gonna get rolled. One of the things about the scissor sweep, and it's, a, it's an amazing technique, but when you first learn it, we're kind of taught, we're here, we open, we, we have to move. And this is when it becomes challenging. If the person has experience on top, they're gonna exploit your movement. But in this position, because our hips are so tight, I control the shoulder and the sleeve. It's the act of unlocking. I keep the hips close, he has to move. See, now I just turn. And when he falls, your foot does not touch the mat. If your foot touches the mat and he hips out, see he's gonna escape, and a lot of times they end up with your foot. So, when your partner falls, you hug their hip with your foot. But you have to be disciplined with your leg work, meaning when I unlock my feet, my knees are never disconnected from his body. If I do this, it's too easy for him to just step right over. You unlock, legs are straight, knees are tight. See, it's hard for him, he has to back out. We'll finish in this position. We can do the same principle as the choke as we did earlier because we're on this side. Hand goes through. Head down, open your knees, and finish. All the mechanics are still the same. But part, his posture is not broken, he's strong posture. All we're doing is making sure the shoulder does not move back. That one is the magic shoulder. When that moves back, that's the indicator he's ready to be swept. <laughs> Bless you. From here, he goes back. See how he turns? Now I just rotate. Once we rotate, bottom leg cuts, top leg pushes. But when he falls, hug the hip. Come up on the elbow, hand to the inside, keep your head to the outside. Just like that. And finish with a choke or just stop right there and reset. Okay, are there any questions? Just another example, like you control the person in this position. Don't give them an easy out if you feel like, well, nothing's working, I'm just gonna have to go to open guard. Close guard, powerful guard. And there are many ways you can counterattack, and even if your attacks are struggling, you can always pull them back in and hold them there for as long as you can. This is how your close guard develops. And then it just grows from there. Okay, we good? Let's go, one, two, three.